Oh, I need to get that smoother. I got to get that smoother. That that roll out of the intro. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to another video, part three. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, we're really in the meat of the game now. We're also on an incredibly long loading screen. It looks like. Oh, do you know what's really weird? It. Oh God, is it crashed? Oh no, there we go. I just needed to click. Yeah, we're in really in the meat of the game now. Um, we are in the first survival section. This is very much like the initial survival sections from the previous games, where you know you'll you'll travel around. We're gonna find some small animals we can fight. We're gonna find some big animals we can fight. Um, and you know we're gonna try and get our tools and our resources and all that kind of stuff. So it should be pretty fun. There's also a um, <clears throat> a tomb here, the first optional tomb of the game. Uh, which, if you remember before I showed you, I've, I've done a couple of the optional tombs. So this is one that I've done before, and we'll go through. I'm not sure if one of the DLCs is available this early. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, just should be plenty to do. Quick recap on the story. Uh, we have crashed in the jungle. In so there are two artifacts. One was the dagger of... Uh, oh god, see, I'm forgetting. I guess it's the dagger of Shuck Shell, because dagger, death. And then there should be a box of Ix shell. I might have reversed those. In fact, let's just look at our relics here. Myth, magics, monsters. Did we read the flight log book? This is the flight log from our plane. Miguel made notes about the long-term weather forecast. Warm, hot, and dry for the next three days. Highs in the low 30s. Mostly clear skies with nothing but light rain expected. Based on his other entries, if Miguel had thought the chances of a severe storm were better than half, he wouldn't have flown us at all. But there was no storm predicted, let alone something serious. So we did do this, didn't we? We did we did read this, and in fact I noted when we read this that it was ridiculously slow. Um, <laughs> no, we've just done it twice in a row. My, uh, my, my apologies for that, guys. Wait, so you've got Exodus, her notebook... Trinity, Dr. Dominguez, illustration of the moon goddesses, a photo of Jonah. We did all of those. So she doesn't... Oh, there you go. Okay, it's, yeah, it's the dagger, of, the key of shark shell, but it's a dagger. This dagger is the key of shark shell. I found an inscription near it. The key to Eshel's heart unlocks the cleansing. So there's this key and there's a box. We've seen... It's funny because in the opening sequence of the game, we saw more references to the box than anything else. There was no sign of this dagger or this key. Uh, lots of stuff about this box. Apparently, with both of them, you can remake the world, and the leader of Trinity wants to do that to remove suffering and, you know... Like, he even sort of gestures towards his own mercenaries and says, we don't need this violence, blah, blah, blah. So he has ostensibly good intentions... Um, but we think he's a bad guy because he's associated with Trinity. Uh, unfortunately, we took this artifact without having the other one, and having one and not the other, for some reason, triggers an apocalypse, you know? I guess because you've got to destroy the world to remake it, and this thing can destroy it, the other thing can remake it. Who knows? Anyway, uh, so yeah, um, that's the story really so far, and we're, we're going to the other location. We're trying to find the box, but our plane crashed because of all the storms and things. <clears throat> Part of the plane landed here. My gear is in that cargo. I'll need to cut it down. So, I actually got very lost here on my very first ever playthrough of this. Uh, very lost. Um, I, I, and there's a chance it will happen again, because now we don't even have Survivor Instinct. Oh, no, we do. Oh, yeah, because I turned it on. We're going to turn Survivor Instincts off now, so gameplay. And then we're just going to say Beacons Off and Glow Off. Uh, you remember I mentioned that there was like a forum thread where people were talking about this, and they really praised playing the game in this way. Um... I think people did it in the other games as well, but they just rebound the key to somewhere far away on the keyboard. Or, you know, I guess if you're playing on a controller, it's a lot harder to do that. Resist temptation or whatever. But yeah, so I'm having it off, um, which will make this a bit trickier. But thankfully, I did do a recent, a couple of play. I've done too many playthroughs of this game at this point. But uh, so I, I should be all right here, hopefully. So yeah, the, the main thing is that's floating over the water, I think, or maybe the far bank. And we just need to get our knife back. And remember, the whole game opened with us using that knife to provide leverage on the rock. We really are, you know, they always say that um, if you're going out into the wilderness, that a knife is the best thing you can have. And this game kind of immediately opens with that idea. So, um, yeah, let's see what we can do. First, you can climb trees, which I think was in the other games. And we're obviously led here. Here we get these supply crates. These have been a staple of all three. Yeah, there's a capybara. I love capybara. They're just giant. As far as I understand, they're giant, oversized hamsters. Um, but yeah, so these were in all the games. Without a knife, we can't even get it. I always like these moments where there's lots of stuff you, you want to interact with, but you can't yet. 
Another thing that we need to rip down, but there's no knife there. We can get some things. I guess these feathers are something we can get. We can also swing from these, like you, you might see howler monkeys and stuff doing. And this is kind of a big open hub area. So the question is, where is the knife? Now, I think we do have to go swimming at some point. Oh, no, I remember. We, we build the knife out of this. So come to the plane, the propeller. I, I kind of want to get into Lara's head there and wonder exactly what she was thinking of there. <laughs> oh, God, you know what? I've just sat down to shoot this video and just now realised, hopefully this isn't TMI, but I really need to go to the toilet, but I don't want to stop. So I think this whole episode... This episode might end up short or... <laughs> We're going to have to get quite distracted so that we, uh, hopefully, the urge goes away. All right, here we go. So, yeah, underwater. Rip this out. More eels. You know, I love the eels, but I do sort of think they overuse it a bit. Come on, Lara. There you go. Stab him in the face. I feel bad for it, really, to a certain degree. But, okay, there you go. All right, so we get the knife. And a little bit of drama as we do so. I don't think there's anything else particularly dangerous down here, but you can get this coral as well, maca leaf. Red leaves of the underwater maca leaf used for healing. And I think that should be about it. Let's have a quick look. So by the way, I'm holding shift sometimes, um, and that will mean that I can swim faster. It's definitely something you want later. Obviously, when you're underwater, you're on a time limit. I always wonder, right, like... I don't actually biologically in the real world know what the balance is, but is it better to swim faster? Because you use more energy, you're going to get more out of breath. Obviously, it depends on your fitness or whatever. But surely, surely, I mean, is there not a, you know, merit to just going slow and you can hold your breath for longer? Oh, we need to sharpen it. Oh, collect salvage to sharpen it, right, of course. So yeah, just go to a couple of these crates that are around, such as this one that we saw back up here. I'm actually amazed. I've done this very precisely. This is quite a big area, and we've just been circling in this little place. Got everything I need. Should head back to camp. Okay. <clears throat> oh, here's there's a challenge, by the way. That there. Uh, we don't have a bow or arrow yet, but I'm pretty sure you can shoot those nests down, and that's like the challenge for this area. Um, can we actually swing at the capybara yet? No, we can't even do that. I guess Lara can only melee attack with her pickaxe, I'm not sure. But yeah, anyway, I hope you, are, you guys are all right. Today's the December 6th, 5th. I'm losing track on time because I'm kind of alternating these episodes with Final Fantasy. I think it's the 6th. I uh, I watched Home Alone last night, a very Christmassy movie, because I'm obviously we're moving into the Christmas season now. Autumn is truly closing down. There's still quite a lot of orange leaves on the trees around me, but I don't know. I guess it depends on where you live. I'm determined to feel Christmassy for once because I so rarely do. And um, and so I just put my decorations up today, watched Home Alone last night, and started the second one, but didn't actually finish it. Okay, so here, check it out. You've got a makeshift knife, a handy improvised blade used to cut rope stealthily and take down enemies. And if you remember from the other games, you can upgrade these in multiple ways. So right now, this is pretty janky, right? Um, very, very basic. But late in fact, she does a pretty good job there of making that into a real knife, don't you think? Uh, but we will uh, we will see that improve as it goes along. This is obviously the crafting menu I couldn't show you in the previous episode. You also have the outfit section. So there's a ton to talk about here and that I could show off here. I kind of don't want to. So by buying DLCs, you get outfits. Um, there's a Square Enix account thing. I think I'm logged in on it. I think I'm connected. I think through logging in on your Square Enix account, maybe if it detects you have other games or something, you get other stuff. I can't really remember, but so for example, this outfit here, the survivor outfit, this is um, what she wore in 2013, I think, but before the clothes got all messed up. Oh no, there you go, yeah, and the clothes are messed up. See, so this is her 2013 outfit, and hopefully it's kind of nostalgic to people. She does look very different. I actually think her face looks horrendous there. I don't remember her looking that way. Did they change her face based on the outfit? Does it? Oh god, they do. Wow. Is that really how she looked in 2013? Yeah, people often talk about her, like, face and her hair and stuff being redesigned. I, I don't really care about those subjects too much. But, yeah, she definitely looks like a different character there. Anyway, um, is this Rise of the Tomb Raider then? This one here? 
Beige cotton Oxford and green pants. A functional outfit for adventures off the beaten path. We also have these ones with these moons. Now, I think that these are DLC-based ones. That's why we got, like, the, sh the, the, the image of the eclipse. The eclipse, you know, we're dealing already with twin goddesses of the moon. You can anticipate that the eclipse is going to be a big thing here in this game. A black variation on the tactical adventure outfit increases the amount of ammo crafted and grants more experience for stealth kills. So here's why there's a lot to talk about. It's not just cosmetics. I kind of don't... I think for most years of my life, I've liked the idea of putting, like, gameplay onto this sort of thing, but I kind of don't like it. Because it means you can't really play around with the visuals too much because you're just going to end up doing the most efficient clothes, right? So, you see here it says benefits full body. We get two perks. Usually you get a perk for the upper half and a perk for the lower half. So, we got uh, craft additional ammo increased amount of ammo crafted on the run and then bonus xp and of course if you're like really nerdy if you're really obsessive if you're really competitive and you really don't need to be any of those things for this game um you're just going to go for xp boosting stuff at the start because that's like the most efficient route um but yeah so that's this this one here the robes of puka hook and here you'll see it's like why has lara got these robes this is actually like vaguely sequence breaking of the story so i kind of don't like a lot of these of course, and then and so then if you want to go back to Survivor 2013, you don't get any perks, so it feels bad, right? Um, this one here, though, this is... Was she wearing this just a second ago? I don't know what we were wearing a second ago. Anyway, this will give us additional resources. Now, that's actually a pretty good perk, and hunting animals, which is very, very good for this stage of the game. But, okay, so I said there's a lot to talk about. Here, let me scroll now. Okay, you've all seen this arrow. There are a ton of outfits. The remnant jacket here, that's from the last game. That's some of the snow stuff. That looks like what J J Jacob used to wear. Brown canvas jacket received from Jacob. Lightweight and sturdy. Oh, is that literally Jacob's clothes? That's quite cool. The commando. Camouflage pants and black tank top with tactical vest. Not really sure where she's worn anything like that in the newer eras. That seems like something from like Angel of Darkness or Chronicles to me, but hey. The desert tank top. I actually like this outfit. <laughs> I don't know too much about fashion or whatever, but I like the colours. Do you know why I like this? Because it's clean, and so often Lara is all scratched up and muddy and just, you know, so gritty. But look how clean that looks. I like that. There's the Infiltrator. More camo. The Siberian Ranger. The Shadow Runner. And look, 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 we keep going. The Wraith skin. This was DLC armor from the last game, if you remember the, um, the Baba Yaga story. Oh my god, do you know what, guys? I remember playing that. And I know I've made videos about that, but that is one of the weird things. I mean, it's a few years ago now, right? It's so odd for me to know that there's a YouTube video of me playing through Barba Yaga. I don't remember what I said or what I was doing in that video. I don't know. Does my voice sound the same? I, it's so weird. I like to think, by the way, that since I started Shadow, some of you guys went back and, like, watched back through 2013 or whatever. I've been watching the YouTube comments because I see when people put comments on any old videos and I've been just waiting to see if anyone says anything on the older ones. But yeah, so that's Baba Yaga if you remember that story. Uh, the leather jacket, that's from the DLC where we were at Croft Manor. The grey Henley, I don't really remember. Okay, now we get to the good ones. The blue Henley. Oh my god. I mean, look at this. I can't do all of these. I can't do all of them. This is too much. But we get to the good ones, okay? For example, Tomb Raider 2's bomber jacket. Hell yeah. So this is where you go to the Himalayas, I think it is. And, um, you know, after the wreck of the Maria Doria, which is my favourite Tomb Raider level of all time, uh, and she puts on the new outfit in the middle of Tomb Raider 2, and uh, you will see, it, it, look, I mean, we're only getting a bit of an impression of it here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear this now. This is much earlier than I thought I was going to do. This game has some crazy twists where we're going to end up dealing with, like, um, you know, complete, we're going to deal with a lot of Christianity in this game. I'll put it that way, right? There are a lot of stuff you wouldn't think is going to be in this game. And when I first played this, I was, uh, when I first played those sequences, I was wearing that outfit and I ruined all the story. Um, but yeah, okay, so is there anything else to say? Oh, I'm finally on the inventory thing. You see here you've got upper body, lower body. This is, um, so you usually get a perk for one and a perk for the other. So this is what she was wearing a second ago, I guess. So as we play through, we will unlock more and more and more. Unfortunately, it's instant unlocked all this stuff at the top. If I had really done a ton of prep, there might have been a way to remove these and unlock them slowly. I don't know. There's so many outfits, actually, and the game's quite short, that there's probably not enough time to even wear them all, which is a real shame, but there it is. Finally, there's rope, a coil of braided rope used for firing rope arrows, making rope lines, and swinging across large gaps. If you remember in the other games, we had to, like, acquire this, but we get it at the start on this one. Okay. 
So, we can also get a skill. I didn't do that in the last part, did I? And you know what? Between videos, I didn't even really think about it. So, why don't we focus on... Um, let's focus on scavenger for now, because I don't want to get perks that, like, eliminate mechanics too quick. So I can craft lure traps. Automatically loot enemies if I stealth kill them. Here you go. Increase breath capacity while swimming underwater. Let's alleviate some people's anxiety. That costs two skill points. We've still got two remaining. Um, so here, perform a stealth kill takedown without alerting any nearby enemies. So you remember how we got caught out before? We could just remove that if we wanted. But that only costs one. Let's go for this. Vesti uh, vestige outfits require fewer resources. Wait, to restore to glory? I'm not actually sure what that means. Here you go. Increase the amount of man-made crafting resources gathered from each source. Let's go with that viper's nest. So there you go. Two little crafting things. And we've made our knife. Uh, I don't know why it's still telling me, like, there's like an exclamation mark, like there's something I haven't moused over or seen. I don't know what that is. But we should be good now. Okay. And now look at this. So this will kind of ruin it a bit. <laughs> So we won't have it on for too long. You'll see there's no lip flap, right? Her mouth won't move. But since we're alone here and I happen to know there's not too much like NPC interaction, I think it will be okay. <laughs> and in gameplay, I actually think it looks quite cool. I like seeing the old like very, very um, simplistic model, but interacting with all the really exotic and, you know, advanced shaders of the, you know, the late 2010s. As she flits in and out of the light and so on. Okay, so we got our knife. Uh, if you remember, at the end of the last part, we saw a flare go up. So our job now is to try and figure out where that flare was. And without survivor instincts instantly pinging the waypoints, it, this is like one of the less clear parts of the game. Why is it still telling me to go to the base camp? Surely it's not. Let's see. Side missions. No active side missions. Peruvian jungle. Challenges, whistle in the dark. Oh yeah, we missed one of those. Yeah, that sucks. Um, where's it just gonna list my main storyline? Survival guide. Oh, it will teach us various things there. Oh, you'll notice as well, by the way, I've been getting these gold pieces, which is kind of weird since all we've been doing is hanging around in a fairly regular area of Mexico at the moment. Oh, I guess we were in a tomb. Never mind. Um, and I'll show you what those are for as we get to it later. Okay. All uh, right. So with the knife. Something still holding the supplies up. We can cut that down. Don't really need to do that. There I hit C, which just let me drop down. Run along with a nice little capybara, oinking away like a pig. Yes. Now I can get my gear back. Okay, yeah, it lands on the other shore. Yeah, because I saw that a minute ago. I remember there was a swimming section here, but then it very clearly looked like that was gonna land on the other shore. But we already did the swim a bit. Okay. That face is so much worse than the original PS1 model. Oh, I accidentally paused. Uh, is it? <laughs> I mean, it's the same, isn't it, really? Pack all my equipment together? It looks worse when it's p juxtaposed with a really gorgeously rendered environment, for sure. Yeah, and you... Anyone? Come in. Miguel? Where are you? Damn. And for what it's worth, I don't know how many of the classic outfits I'll show. Like, they've got one from each era. Um, as a Tomb Raider 2 fan, I think this is sort of my main thing, so this might be the only time we do it. Okay, so we can move on now, but there is an optional tomb, which I don't want to miss, and I think it's over here somewhere, so give me a second. Now, if you guys remember from the whole relic thing, it kind of listed the mountain stories. The uh, pickup system in this game is actually pretty cool, in as much as... There are like whole side stories and histories about the areas of the world that you're in if you've collected all of the relics and they're like chain into a long storyline. So for this area of the world, we will hear about um, an explorer that was here during the time of the conquistadors and what sort of happened to his group. Oh God, are we really gonna get anything useful from this? Look at that gore on that. Um, and we can already get a couple of those journal pieces here too, which I would like to show off. It's just one of those weird things again where this is one of those games where you get the story out of order initially and that sort of sucks. Oh, we can hunt things now because we got we got our bow and arrow back. Um, oh, there's a hidden cache here. Usually you've, you like transcribe some monolith or, 
you know, ancient writing in order to find out where those caches are. Or at least the really good ones, anyway. Little stagnant pond here, which I would never want to go into. Here we go, so Jack's journal. A page from Jack Fawcett's expedition journal, but this is the sixth August entry. Month. I am leaving this page here to assuage any mystery should the rest of this quest prove as fatal for me as it has been for my party. My name is Jack Fawcett. I set out from Cuya by Mato Grosso on the 20th of April, 1925, with my father, Percival Harrison Fawcett, and my best and longtime friend, Rally Rimmel, in search of Zed. I am the only one left. My father was lost to a pair of fierce jungle cats and rally to blunder. I myself am worse for wear, but refuse to give up. My father believed we are close to Zed, and so do I. So leaving two graves behind me, I will push west still, with the hope that I am not walking to my own end. So Zed, what is Zed? That's going to be the big question on your mind. And you might think, okay, is that the hidden city? Is that this thing with this box? Is, you know, is that the, 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 the mountain with the silver crown? Are they hunting for the same thing that we are? But why is it called Zed? Um, so yeah, we'll go through those. You know what I really selfishly and weirdly think? Is this odd of me? I kind of just want to mute the game and read those out myself. <laughs> I feel like I could read them faster and with a little bit more emphasis. <laughs> is that crazy? All right, so get those ruffled feathers. Now, that I believe is the way forwards. And in fact, if we look at the waypoint, that totally is. And what we would do, I mean, I can show you here. You can fire at that, create the rope bridge. I always wonder with that little moment there, if you've never played the other editions, if that would confuse you a little bit. But didn't, because we haven't done that yet, have we? In this game. It might be kind of tricky to, to actually figure out. And then that always leads me to wonder, well, what proportion of the players of this game are returning from the other two in the Survivor Trilogy? But hey. Uh, so yeah, before we cross that though, let's just do a, a perimeter sweep, right? We'll just go around the outside of generally where we can travel and you might notice by the way this is a sort of hub where you survive and you fight enemies and you craft and you hunt it's not as fascinating as the one even from 2013 is it do you guys think i mean in 2013 they actually actively make you hunt a deer and it feels kind of involved this time i don't know like there's just capybara wandering around that's about it okay so here's a crypt does this does crypt mean tomb i don't think it does Struggle for power, an, an account of infighting between the Spanish. Cusco belongs to Hernando Pizarro, rightful representative of the Spanish crown. Diego de Almagro has been captured. Rodrigo Orgones is dead, and the rest of their heretic forces routed. We made a crossing over the mountains and appeared on the coast outside of Cusco. Orgones marched to meet us at Cachupampa, a poor choice for his cavalry. His falconets threw Gonzalo's infantry charge into disorder, but the swampy ground prevented his seasoned cavaliers from true advantage. Our imperial arquebusier breached the river and unleashed hellfire on the opposition. Pizarro and Orgones led their respective cavalries, each merging to a single charging column, all of the men yelling, and met at full gallop. I had never seen such a thing. Somewhere in the chaos of battle, Orgones was shot and unhorsed and killed. They say the coward Almagro retreated from the battlefield atop an ass. Fitting. Excerpt from Alonso Luiz's journal. So, if you're confused about that, as I kind of am as well, there's a, there's a reference to a lot of events and people and things there that really we have no context for, right? Maybe this is the thing where you need real world <laughs> knowledge. But if you have a look... That is not a part of Jack's journal, okay? Jack's journal story is called Expedition Unknown. Here, we're looking at conquerors, okay? And so there's struggle for power. And some of these might only make a bit more sense to us as we, we go along later. Who knows? Also, yeah, the, the downside to me voicing these myself is going to be that some of these things I don't quite know how to pronounce. And Camilla would have had people coaching her and explaining, you know, exactly how those things go. So here, you see how we have to rope arrow to break our way into this. That means if we didn't do the whole thing with a knife and stuff, we would be stuck if we just stumbled upon this. So, um, yeah, you do have to wait a moment. So let's crawl through. Careful, careful. 
Honestly, this is not the tomb that I was thinking of, so I'm not quite sure what we're wandering into here. Uh, in the live chat, uh, Mish King says, if you know they do a uh, merging of the three other Tomb Raider li tomb line, sorry, if you, they do a merge of the three t uh, timelines and give us a new Unreal Engine 5 remake, you look forward to Natler as the antagonist again. I think that would be really interesting too. Like, there are things that I'm excited about from the past eras coming back, but I don't know how much they can lean into the old lore. I just, I, I feel like... They, it's possible, but there needs to be good recaps and entertaining recaps. That's the other thing. The recaps have to both teach people who are out of the loop. Oh god, this quick one. I actually don't know where we are. I have no memory of this. I think I was looking for a tomb here, and I've ended up in a crypt that I've never played. I'm deadly serious. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna suddenly be a lot less chatty. Oh here we go, look. Learn a little bit of language here. Increase our proficiency. So this is a different language you'll see. This is for Urku. Oh wait, no, Quake Quaker. May Urku be the one to chart the path from this life to the next, so that we may all travel safely. Okay, interesting. This is like a shepherd of the dead figure. What is Quaker though? Is that uh, is that their language? Quaker monoliths. Collect more artifacts to decipher proficient Quaker monoliths. Okay. Or Ku Kuecha? I don't know. Kuecha? That sounds a bit better than me. Oh, a be bit better to me. Yeah, uh, sometimes the floor will fall away. Right as I stood on that, that was kind of weird. Obviously, Lara reacted, but I myself thought, oh god, that's not right. By the way, this is just going to take us back, isn't it? I should have gone the other way. Oh man, no white chalk. That makes this kind of scary, doesn't it? I think we can just scramble on this. Yeah. Okay. More mud. This is honestly really creepy. I like the ambience in here. Yeah, okay, and then this is the door. So this is just the way out. Is it gonna close the other one, like an airlock? No, okay. All right, so let's go back down and see where this ends up properly. I believe the idea of a tomb is that it's really big and complicated and you get like a lot of puzzling to do in there. And I believe a crypt is shorter and not necessarily full of physics puzzles. Oh god. Wouldn't be Tomb Raider without a good slope sequence. Here? Oh, here we go. We Can we open this up? This you'll be familiar with from the, two, the previous game, Rise. Hmm. I think it's basically the same animation and everything. Vestige, Evening Star's boots, new gear acquired, feathered boots said to be worn. Some outfits give gameplay benefits when worn. So hold on, is this one of the DLCs? I'm getting a DLC vibe from this. But maybe this would explain how I hadn't uh, seen this when I first played. Oh God. I mean, look at this, by the way, I think even rooms like this have a certain aesthetic and a certain enjoyment to them. They are kind of beautiful in their own way, you know. There's not even much happening here. Oh, missing gear. Oh, are you serious? You're not even gonna, oh wait, but that's just mining, I think. I think that's just mining for resources. It's not that we can break that open and actually end up going somewhere. To be the way up. Okay, she says that like she's surprised, as though I've missed something, but I don't believe I have. So just a fun little extra explorable area. <laughs> And a part of a new outfit for me. What if I dropped down there? Death, maybe? It looks like just a path. Maybe that's where I ran a second ago. Yeah, and during the crawling sequences, you can tap C to, uh, to move fast. All right, there we go. So that's it. And then back out. Scramble up this wall. If this is... Oh, no, no we're already past that, aren't we? Uh, it feels like in this mud I can't jump, by the way. That's something you might want to pay attention to. So there you go, that's a crypt. That's a little bit of bonus content. I didn't even think we were going to do that today because I didn't know this existed. <laughs> I think I vaguely remember having beaten the game and looking back at this area. And, you know, like on the world map it will show, oh, there's this thing you haven't done, there's this thing you haven't done. I, I think I vaguely remember it saying that there was something else here, but that I've just never happened to find. But there you go. Look, the perimeter sweep worked out, worked wonders for us. 
I knew that was wrong, or not what I was expecting, the moment we entered that cave there, because the place we're actually going isn't... doesn't open with a cave. Here you go, challenge tomb nearby here. See, look at this. It's right next to it, goddammit. <laughs> so, this will actually be a, be a puzzle. Which, of course, I'm going to be a total expert at. It's been a few months. But I'm pretty sure I remember how it goes. Okay, I say there's not a cave. Yeah, there's, there's, there's totally not. Oh, what? I need the climbing axe. Yeah, but this has got that yellow on it. I swear yellow means DLC. Isn't that a thing? Is this another challenge tomb? Are there two of them here? I mean, this is all really good, actually. I quite like that this is on video because it, it will be giving you guys an impression of quite an expansive game. And to be fair, for all, all that I've criticised of this has been quite short... Um, who knows how much it that, that has been rectified by the DLCs. That's kind of one of the things I'm most interested in at the moment. And actually, I haven't really said this out loud. Yeah, look, see, that's flashing up there. That's totally a tomb. Is the other one over there, though? This is just back up past the camp. Let's have a quick look at this outfit. Yeah, one of the things I haven't really mentioned just yet is, but I'm kind of considering reviewing this game. Maybe after I've beaten it. I like the idea of doing a playthrough and then a review at the end. So we'll keep assessing and seeing what we think. Okay, so crafting upgrades. Upgrading weapons requires the necessary parts, resources, and skills. From the inventory, select a weapon, blah, blah, blah. I can show you guys this better than anything else. So look, we've got all these different bows already. And you see these eclipse icons. Again, I think that means they come from DLCs. I'm not going to skip ahead to those. We're just going to use the regular rec recurve bow for now because that's what we would have available to us. And every single one has its own tree of upgrades. Again, this is a bit like what I mentioned with the skill tree conversation before. There's so much you can do. Here's how I would describe this game. I think I put a tweet out about this back in 2018. This is a game where it's like they've made all the systems that go around a game, but not the game itself. <laughs> that's that's how I describe it. But currently it looks like we don't have the resources for anything for what it's worth. But here, so you see, we just need a little bit of leather, right? We've got four out of five leather. And if we hunt a capybara, we can do that. I think we've only got four because we found those corpses a second ago. And what this would do is you see damage here, this green chunk. If we collect this upgrade, it will give us this green on the damage. Right now, the bow is currently perfectly balanced with damage, rate of fire, draw speed, hold time. And so, yeah, there's uh, reinforced limbs for damage, strong knocks for rate of fire, a grip wrap for draw speed, or wrapped string. And so you'll see also there are various... You know, you can upgrade some things more than once. But you might think, okay, so that's the upgrades. It's actually unique for everything, though. So, like, the, these bows, I can't actually go into the menu for some of them. They will do different things, and they have different base stats here. For example, this thing starts with, with lower hold time. Some of these are totally just not appropriate for us to have until we're a little bit in the game. So, let's not worry about that. What was that I came here for? I came here to look at my outfits. Did we get a new lower body? Yeah, here you go. The Evening Stars Boots. So these are feathered boots, but we also need to craft them. We need eight of a resource we've never had there. Looks like paper of some kind, who knows. But so yeah, we can uh, keep our eye out for those and look to pick them up in a bit. I can also say, yeah, we've got a skill point or whatever, but we'll do with that in a bit. All right, one final little look here, because I swear... Oh yeah, that's just the ruffled feathers challenge. Let me just have a quick look on the left. And if I don't find the tomb here, we will, uh, we will happily move on. This is going to take me back to the camp. Yeah, okay. Oh, but that makes me think. Hold on, maybe there's a lot more that we can see. Uh, we'll happily move on. We'll go across that rope bridge and try to look for this person who threw up the flare. Well, we found a relic. A handkerchief. Well, you know there's not going to be a wall of text with this. The monogram reads P-H-F. That has to stand for Percival Harrison Fawcett. P-H-F. Percival Harrison Fawcett. So hold on, which story was Percival in? Cusco belongs to Hernando Pizarro, rightful representative. No, Percival wasn't here, so this was Expedition Unknown. Yeah, there you go, and it's in fact it's listed there. What if I picked up the handkerchief before I found Jack's journal? So wait, this is from Jack Fawcett's journal. The monogram reads. P-H... This is from... This is Percival's handkerchief. Wasn't Percival the dad? Isn't that what they said? I won't go back in there. Again, I wish she kind of didn't all I read, because then I could just scan with my own eyeballs. Maybe I should set up a little hotkey to quickly mute or unmute the game, and then we can do stuff like that. That might be quite cool. Another thing for the challenge there. Always keep your eye out. 
Is this the road that we came from? Looks like it might be. I vaguely remember wading through a bit of mud. Oh yeah, we can't even go any further. By the way, I think even the mud effect looks pretty good there, right? With the water. Quicksand's like one of those classic things that I always think about with Tomb Raider as well. It's not that this is particularly dead, deadly or anything. We're going to get swallowed up in it, but you know. Okay, let's scramble up here. Got a tree to cut down. No paths as far as I see. That drop was pretty big. That could have done damage to us. I was tapping C madly there to like scramble at the end. In the other games, that's a perk to mitigate full damage. I don't know if we already have it yet. Probably we don't. So that's just muscle memory for now. But later it'll probably come in handy. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we need the climbing pick. I mean, I swear, I swear you can do it first time you get here though. And then this is just this little area we were at before. All right, well, never mind. Let's just progress on. I can't believe we need the pot climbing pick for that. I swear. What's quite nice is that that rope's still there as well, you know, actually. Also, I'm sure some of you are dying to see me kill a capybara. But he's ran off. We'll have plenty of opportunity. Don't worry, guys. In fact, there are much more deadly things in this jungle than, than them. Which we'll see soon enough. Nice camera work here. And you could cut the rope after you, but I don't think that that's really necessary. Unless you're in a puzzle, like we saw in the previous part, it's not really necessary. Miguel, I don't like this. A single Miguel? boot. Where are you? Now, if you remember, I called, I called Miguel a red shirt before. <laughs> Miguel, Miguel. Was that wrong of me? Maybe? I mean, look at this blood stain. His clearly was like trying to cling onto this rock as he's getting dragged away. I mean, look at this. And look, his. What's that thing on the internet people always say? If your shoes come off in an accident, that's it. <laughs> you're, you're a goner. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, another journal. Sisamite. A description of a monster. Every part of the world seems to have its own mythical, forest dwelling, bipedal creature. Around here, it's known as the Sisamite, the guardian of the forest. Described as large and ape-like, it's rumored to kill male humans on sight, but takes the females to its cave for mating purposes. Lovely. Truly lovely. I mean, they don't quite go that far with Bigfoot, do they? <laughs> but yeah, so the Sisamite. Is that what we're dealing with here? Don't forget, it could be true. I do think that this trilogy did a good job of, like, balancing the two ideas of like what feels quite realistic and like real normal threats and then also the magical stuff on top Miguel? oh the system i think miguel is female <laughs> says banjo in chat and took him away yeah i mean there you go it doesn't track does it this isn't a system because miguel is male but i don't know there was a lot of blood what if he's being eaten Oh, I'm going to totally ruin this scene with this outfit now, by the way. I do apologise. <laughs> I'm actually quite looking forward to it, though. Ugh. Nice touch with the flies. Happy to report my desire to go to the loo has completely uh, passed. Scotty wore a red shirt and never died. Oh, spoilers, man. I haven't finished the original series yet. Unbelievable. I've only had, what, 40 years? Look at this. Okay, this here, this shot, all right, if you watch the trailer, I think they do this exact shot here uh, in CGI or something. Or maybe they just pulled it out of the game. But, I mean, what an image here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a jaguar. Blood around its mouth. Our face. Oh no, we get no expression. She's scared, okay? Alright? Trust me, I played this before. She's scared, everyone. Uh-oh. Don't they they don't they're cats. They don't hunt in packs, do they? Look at her covered in the mud as well. I mean it is cool, isn't it? Alright, by the way, heavy chance of a game over here. Last time I recorded this, I got one. 
Okay, challenge. I think we got to get out of the mud because we can't really dodge around while we're in the mud, mud too well. So yeah, this is just like the rise sequence with the bear. This is just like uh, 2013 with the wolves. You know, we're going through the motions here. Got to be careful here. Look at these rays of sunlight coming down though, right? I actually don't know. Oh, okay, we're going this way. I believe this little sequence here is one time only, so you don't have to worry about pickups. There's one. Missed. All we have is a bow and arrow. Actually, hold on. Can I teach you guys? Oh, too late. Defeat the Jaguars. So, they will come charging at you. Ah, and yeah, when they when they leap at you, I press space, not C there, because I'm a dummy. You're supposed to dodge. And look at the howler monkeys watching us in the fight. How cool is that? You can actually shoot at them, it seems. Oh my god, there was one next to me! Yeah, the more white our screen goes, the worse this is going to get. Also, these guys are very tanky. So yeah, we can craft just by holding left click. You see at the bottom, my feathers and my wood are going away. Oh, I did space again. It sort of helped. There, there's a dodge. All you got to do is hit them enough and they'll run off. And by the way, there's something quite cool, like thematically they're doing here with the story. Hopefully is I'm not reaching here to say this. And I don't think I, it, it's, it's too much of a stretch. But you know, this is a story about the twin goddesses. And the big boss fight they give you this time, you know, before it was like a single big bear. This time what they're doing is they're giving us twin twin, ja twin jaguars that we fight. And I, I do think that's deliberate. I do think that that's supposed to make us think of the rest of the, the game. So yeah, anyway, what they're teaching us here is ammo crafting on the fly. Okay, so this is just... I couldn't dodge that. I was pressing the button for as well. Here, I don't know if I can hold A and D. I'm just tapping like a madman. <laughs> oh... Oh, kitty. <laughs> this, this outfit. And I think if you want to get really metaphorical about it, if you want to be a real lit, lit nerd, you can kind of look at the fact that Lara's killing one here and the other one will walk away to nurse its wounded. Minor spoilers for two seconds in the future. And you can maybe draw a parallel between that and how this whole story is going to go. What I mean by that exactly, obviously, we'll have to wait. Sorry, I totally took the tension out of that scene by saying all that. If this was the classic style of my LPs, I probably would have just muted my microphone in editing after all of that. But you, you have to live with it now, everybody. <laughs> you have to live with the, the rambling. So there you go. I didn't get a game over. I'm very happy. Okay, so there it says healing. Tap num1 to heal with medicinal herbs. So yeah, I rebound this. It's num1 for me because I use an MMO mouse. Because I... Maybe you don't know this about me. I play MMOs. And um, so it's very easy. That's just on my thumb on my right hand. And so you'll see there that just by holding this, we can uh, patch ourselves up. Um, you can also craft stuff on the flight. Now, how does all of this work? I can't really remember. Holding left click will give us arrows on the fly, exchanging feathers in the wood. If I hold middle mouse, you see it's going to try and auto-craft flame arrows. You see I have oil, I have arrows, but I'm missing something in the middle. That's that same resource we needed for those boots. So we can't quite do that just yet. But when I'm on my wheel, you'll see I, you've got the bow and arrow there, 20 arrows, and above it you'll see there's this optional ammunition, the flame arrows. Um, so I think in New Game Plus, you can use flame arrows uh, in this fight, but yeah. Uh, my favorite thing about this scene is the Howler Monkeys, just like watching, it's so cool. So that's our little arena fight done. Now the question is, where's Miguel? And is he okay?
There's the back half of the plane. Wait, am I an idiot? Did we see Miguel in that uh, cutscene just now? <laughs> you apparently missed something. Are we using a new Lego model? <laughs> it's funny to me that you think of Lego with that. Um, which I can see it. Oh, the Lego Star Wars is coming out soon, right? You know, I'm not much of a Star Wars geek, but uh, my God, that Lego game looks so good. Have you guys seen the trailers for the new Lego Star Wars? I swear it's coming out like this week or next week. They're doing it for like the holiday rush, I think. Okay, a page from Jack Fawcett. This is Journal 5, so immediately proceeding. 1st of August. Tonight, sleep escapes us. The jungle is angry and the moon is uncooperative. The human imagination wanders endlessly in the dark this deep. I can hear the jungle's breath ruffling behind my ears. Its low growl shaking the very ground we lay on. Its manic energy rustling through the trees above. Rest has become the lead on our search finding us at the most inopportune time. I have caught father dozing off mid-step and his hand barely clutching his walking stick. We have run out of food and are sustained almost entirely by gathered berries and rainwater. The both of us are far too unyielding to give up. I fear the very stubbornness that led us to this point may also be that which leads us to our early graves. I wonder if at some point Jack will write in his journal about his father's handkerchief just offhandedly somewhere. Or maybe it will even have, like, specific significance. That would be quite cool. I wish the UI, when I came out of a menu like that, just took me back to the relic screen. I know it would be an extra click or key press for people, and you might find that tedious. But it would give you a chance to reflect on where the relic fits in with the previous story every time. You know, whether it comes before or after. In fact, I'd rather have that screen first, you know. the, mo the As much context as you can give someone before this sudden bomb of, you know, wall of text, the better. Okay, so I mean, this place is gorgeous too. Cave, pretty pretty good place to hide out, wouldn't you guys say, if you've just crashed? Better than Lara's adventure, hanging upside down from a tree. Oh, we're missing the climbing axe still. Oh, hold on, don't we get it from... Oh, God, imagine if I've messed up real bad and it turns out that way back, there was like oh, a bunch of more gear I needed to get. But no, I think it's up here on this plateau. Again, a bit more context for people. If you played or watched my 2013 playthrough, you'll remember that planes and plane wrecks were a big part of that game because they were all crashing on this island filled with storms. And there was a really memorable sequence there where you play like a quick time event where you go into a plane, the head of a plane as it's going to fall off of a cliff. And I'm sure that that's what they want you thinking of as you do this here. But no, we just slide down to a nice little camp. There's our climbing axe. Yeah. <laughs> One final scene. I thought I got you killed. With Tomb Raider 2, Lara. Hey. Do you know what happened to Miguel? Yeah, I'm an idiot. You didn't make it. Yeah, we saw his body. I, I blacked it out. We saw he. We saw he died. What's wrong with your arm? Uh, some sort of parasite. I was looking for some wormwood, but it doesn't grow around here. Uh, Let me see. Oh, this is gross, by Why? the way. <laughs> what are you doing? If we leave it in there, it'll only get worse. Sit. Uh, you sure you know what you're doing? Uh. <laughs> I had something similar happen to me when I was a child in Egypt. I won't lie, it's gonna hurt. You think that's... Uh, so quick pause there. She just mentioned being a child in Egypt. Obviously, Egypt is like... When I think Tomb Raider, you know, the word tomb is in there. And when people think tombs, I think the instinct is to think of Tutankhamun, is to think of Egypt, right? Um, and the classic era did have Egypt as a part of it. What's really interesting is Egypt had nothing to do with the second reboot. There was no Egypt content there at all, um, which I felt like was a real missed trick. And then 
Um, you know, a lot of these adventures are like globe trotting adventures. You go all over the place. But in the classic era, they gave us like there was a sequence in Egypt in the very first game, and then like four was entirely in Egypt. Egypt's a big thing about Tomb Raider, as far as I believe. Maybe I'm wrong with that. Um, the second reboot like skipped it, which is just crazy sad to me. Um, and now this tr Survivor trilogy, you'll realize this is the end. This is the last game. And again, we have skipped Egypt. But they they do make it a part of Lara's history. And yeah, if you remember, if you go back to my uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider playthrough, the most recent game, um, one of the DLCs did talk about this thing where she spent um, her childhood in Egypt. So it's nice to... I like that line a lot because it reminds me that... I don't know, the writers, the studio, whatever, they do still consider it to be a part of the franchise in some way. Even if it's kind of minor, you don't hear about it very much, but yeah. The storm from earlier was the storm. The one from the mural. I don't know. Uh, uh, I think maybe we should stop and take stock. We've been pushing so hard forward. <laughs> Flying into that storm. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. I... Well, I should have insisted we turn back. I mean, I get it. You lock onto a problem and everything else just disappears. <laughs> Jonah. I, I, I'm with you. It's my choice most of the time. But if we die, who stops the cataclysms? Who keeps Trinity from doing what they want? <laughs> We're supposed to read her face and we can't. Sometimes I feel like I have to keep going and if I don't then I'll just let everyone down. But maybe for the sake of a few hours we could have turned back. You got another man killed. Of course you could have. Ah. <laughs> uh. Maybe we should give him a name. I love how that was connected to her hand. My cousin. He's always trying to get under my skin. <laughs> Goodbye, Eli. I feel sad that she squashed it there. I don't like killing bugs. I don't know about you guys, but I always, always try. I, I feel terrible. Like, if I ever step on a snail, I just feel the worst in the world. Thanks. I'm scared, vaguely scared of spiders, but I'll always catch them and release them. If we can find Kowak Yaku, we can rest for the night. Sounds good. My reasoning for it is thus. I think I've talked about this before, all right? Jonah's probably going to interrupt me here, so hold on a second. can see the village through the vines over there. Let's just wait. I'm glad you stayed at the crash site. Well, if you were out there, I wanted you to be able to find me. I had a flare gun, so... Yeah, I think Miguel was heading toward it when... Poor guy. Yeah, I don't know how I... How to get Eli in your arm anyway? Uh, I was trying to figure out if the water was clean. Got my answer. <laughs> yeah, that's always one of the most scary <laughs> things about being in the jungle, right? Stuff you said about the cataclysms, the apocalypse. I believe that if it is true, it's important enough to die for, or for Trinity to kill for. So this is really about revenge? No, no. I... When I took the key... I also felt a power pulling me towards something. It's real. It's interesting that I couldn't really show that on screen. They just made it a tremor. When you took the key, is it in your head now? No. It left me when Dominguez took the key. If it's that strong, how can you be sure? Let's just find Kwak Yaku, okay? Okay. So if I holds the key... You know, if it was about revenge, I'd understand. <laughs> Would you, though? Wouldn't you rather be somewhere warm and dry with a beer, maybe a friendly stranger to flirt with? <laughs> yeah, I would, like you can imagine. But I'd still understand. It's not revenge. Well, don't worry, Jonah. He will literally get his wish very soon. Man, this game is just like playing like Guild Wars. It's impossible to LP because you try and speak and they go on and on and on. Um, but yeah, so I guess anyone holding the key is like being drawn towards the box or whatever. But yeah, okay, um, oh my god, I was saying a, a billion things in a row there, and I've, like, forgotten them all now. Let's just go up, let's go to the campfire, let's change our outfit, and then let's, um... <clears throat> it's such a relief to have Jonah back, especially after Miguel. At least Jonah didn't ask what happened. The Jaguars. I don't want him to worry. We have to stay sharp if we're gonna get ahead of Trinity. 
Yeah, I don't know. I must have blacked it out when we saw Miguel's corpse. I'm really embarrassed about that. But hey, okay, so inventory uh, outfits. Oh, I remember. Yeah, my, my reasoning for not killing bugs. Okay, here's the reasoning. First is because, you know, I think everything has a right to life. And, uh, you know, it's not my, it's not up to me to take that away or whatever. I know as well, like, when you catch a spider and you release it outside, often, like, house spiders want to be inside because there's a certain warmth they need. And you're probably indirectly killing them. But it's like, I don't know, what am I going to do? Look after every spider I find. I mean, I just don't want it in my vicinity. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm being an indirect killer by doing that anyway. And when I used to watch that guy's tarantula videos on YouTube, because, you know, I was so scared of them. But they're kind of interesting. I realized how fragile they are they are like a bunch of like the, you, you think that they're all like really really dangerous and deadly but even the slightest little movements at the wrong time like before they molt or whatever they, it's gonna kill them anyway that, that's one thing but the other thing is right i like to imagine this i don't really believe in a higher power like on any level really but imagine there is an, a higher power imagine there is something that views you like an insect I like to believe that that thing, let's say it's like an alien civilization or whatever, right? Whatever you want it to be, a god, whatever. I like to believe that it would have the capacity to spare my life and feel a bit of compassion and to spare me. So how can I believe that that's possible? Well, if I embody that myself, that that I'm a higher power to the insect and I'll keep I'll keep a bug alive. So because I do that, I've proved it's possible in this universe, in this reality. Some things do do that. I myself live it. So maybe maybe I'll be all right. Maybe I'll get a free pass. <laughs> and maybe I'll be safe. That's, that's like my deeper reasoning. <laughs> These are the things to think of, everybody. Okay, let's change our clothes. Because we still can't craft this. Um, but I don't want to wear anything too exotic or crazy. Let's wear that thing that I said looked really clean. Where is it? This one. The great... No... Not the Grey Henley. Oh, maybe it was the Grey Henley. I think it was the Grey Henley. Was it this really? This doesn't look clean anymore, though. Is that because it's been a couple of days and they've put some new shaders and things on there? Oh, no, it was this, wasn't it? Yeah, these were the gloves. Here we go. The Infiltrator. Apparently, this is Cam... No, 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 it's not. It's because I'm out there. The Desert Tank. A light grey tank top. Exploring old tombs has made it rather dirty. Well, it's okay, I think. It's not really day, is it? That's like fashionably day. That's like teenagers ripping their jeans because they think it will make them look better. Okay, and so you'll see now I have... Oh, no, I've got one extra skill point. So we can buy something cheap. Oh, no, 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 we've got two skill points. Yeah, so you'll see now that we get spammed with this stuff. Increase the chance of finding rare animals. I like rare animals. Yeah, the rare animal feature in this game is wild. You guys wouldn't believe it. Like, there is so much stuff. There are certain creatures in this game and, like, currencies and things that I've basically never interacted with because it's just so overloaded. Here, let me... Like, look at this. You've got condors, empress jaguars. That's a rare one. Black wolves, albino capybaras, eagles. There's loads of weird stuff in the game that really... Oh, by the way, there's also a sarcophagi. Crypts, tombs, tomb steals. Don't even know what that is. Well, anyway, look, we've got the um, the rock climber now. So the other thing I'd like to do, hopefully they've got a... Oh, they don't have fast travel unlocked yet? Damn. I was going to go back and do that tomb now. I thought this was a really good opportunity to do that. But hey, all right, okay. So, man, I'm surprised how much time today we've spent sitting around at camps. Let's keep going. Yes, rip Miguel. Such a red shirt that I didn't even notice his death moment. It would have been there very plainly in my face. I would have been thinking about something else, though. It would have been right before the Jaguars attacked us. We can get through here. Give me a hand. I guess I was extra thirsty today because I finished my coffee already. I think in Final Fantasy yesterday, well, I still had it on the go after 15 minutes. Have I ever had a parasite, WP? No. No, I haven't. Um. Oh! No, not really. No, I don't think so. I've had ticks. It must be quite you know, like you get from get grass or whatever. Playing around as a kid. But uh, nothing else. So there we got Kuakyaku. Nice little set uh, settlement. Um, well, I say nice. More of a shanty town, really, right? What do they call them? Favelas? Is that the, the word for this area of the world? Or is that a specifically uh, Brazilian thing on the edges of seas? And I love how high up we are here. The water looking so far away. Stay close to me. This is definitely not a path. 
She's so overly bold. Oh. 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 Almost there. You got another. He's heavier than you. I love the little brick rocks that they put around on the ground that like move, and, like they're kicking around. Right. I'm okay. Just a couple more steps. Okay. Okay. You're right. I, I, I'm okay. I'm okay. I like Jonah, and I like all these exploring sequences with him. But you know, he's only one of the characters from the original game, and it's so weird to me that the Survivor trilogy ended up all about him. That's hilarious. Did you guys see that? He basically just walked off, and the game brought him back. But yeah, I mean, look down there. It doesn't look pleasant to fall in for sure. What do you think built all this? It could have been the ink. The bridge is down. Maybe we could lift it with those counterweights. Maybe. He totally cut himself off there. It could have been the Inca, she thinks. Well, over here, we can see someone's language. Let's see who it is. Uh, there was a good question in chat there. Hey, WP, a while back, you mentioned ex enjoying RimWorld, but losing a lot of time to it. Have you considered giving Dwarf Fortress a try, even if off camera? Uh, no, no, no. That story is not how you remember it. The Incan god Khan. He was the son of Inti, the sun god, and Pachamama, the moon goddess. Khan was in charge of the wind and the rain. Although, in some legends, he was only in charge of the weather that came from the south, while his brother, Pachacamac, was in charge of weather that came from the north. So again, we kind of have another idea of, like, twinned gods and things. These aren't twins, though, are they, really? The Inca god Con. Con is the son of Inti, who is the sun god. Pachamama, the moon goddess. So, the Inca had a moon god, too. Pachamama. But we're dealing with the Maya? Right? The Maya god? I mean, uh, this is so bad, isn't it, really? I really need... If anyone has a, anyone at any point in the future, I don't care if the year is 2035 and you're watching this video. By the way, if you are at any point, that would be pretty cool. You should definitely drop a comment. Um, if anyone has a resource that will help, or like a, a learning, like a mnemonic or something that will help me... Differentiate. What are the key differentiations between Aztec, Maya, and Inca? I would love to have that, that knowledge, right? And then that would help me a bit here. But anyway, so yeah, they have a moon goddess. Um, Con was in charge of the wind and the rain. Although in some legends, he was only in charge of the weather that came from the south. And his brother, Pachama Pachacamac, was in charge of the wind weather that came from the north. Lots to learn. Anyway, so we learned a little bit about them. Okay, the Rimworld thing... No, my story was I liked the look. I love the look of Rimworld. It looks awesome. It looks like exactly my kind of game, and it looks like the kind of game I could get addicted to. And I know that its reputation is a game that you can lose loads of hours to. However, and I bought it and I installed it and I played a little bit of it. Oh, I'm I'm skipping. I'm cheating here a little bit by climbing up there. But I didn't play much in the end. I only played like two hours, and I couldn't really get past the tutorial. You know, there's kind of a brick wall of learning you have to do with a game like that, and. And it, it kind of uh, wore me off. And because I knew that if I did actually get past that point of no return where I learned enough about the game, that would be it. I would just lose it and I would lose hundreds of hours to it. So I only, I didn't actually sink a lot of time into it. I sort of warded myself off of it. I and I did the same with Factorio. <laughs> you want to try it? Uh, I think I'll stick to the bottles you found in the cargo from the plane. Dude, leaning down to that, you got another risk of just getting swept up. I mean, Jesus Christ, look at that. I would not trust any ancient thing like this. This actually feels very well maintained, don't you guys think? Okay, so there's a dig spot here. Now, there's a fun you know, thing. If I had known how much time I'd spend at the wilderness, I'd, I'd have paid more attention in Boy Scouts. <laughs> Wasn't your thing? Well, my family situation meant we didn't get to do a lot of stuff like that. I don't actually know much about his family situation. I suppose you would learn more in the novel or the comics. But I don't really know too much. So, you see, we got a, we got we found a, a device a second ago that allowed us to understand their language a little bit better. Ever do Girl Scouts or Nature Camp as a kid? Mm, does boarding school count? <laughs> I don't know. Does it? <laughs> Probably not. But Roth showed me some things. I always preferred the company of adults anyway. <sighs> yeah. I miss that guy. Me too. Oh, Roth, man. I seriously think 2013 was the best game of the reboot. Roth, Grimm. There were so many good characters in that game. I love hearing them being referenced here still. 
Ah, uh, but yeah, so we learned a bit of the language. We're gonna find a clue here as well in a second. A llama figurine. The canopa serves as a receptacle for offerings of cocoa and animal tallow. The stuffed canopa is thrown into the farmer's field at the start of the harvest season as a gift for Pachamama, the mother god. It is said, if the present is accepted, the farmer will yield large crops in a successful breeding season. I love all this stuff. This is really interesting info. It's not too much to look at here, really, but nice artifact. With Eli gone, your arm should heal quickly. Yeah, I feel a lot better already. Okay, so now that we've done enough of that, we can uh, we can actually read some of those monoliths. Is that the thing I tried to interact with a second ago and got distracted because Lara and Jonah and stuff were talking? Was it, uh, where is it? This thing here, was this? Could I have interacted with this? Yeah, here we go. Proficient uh, Quaker monolith. So now that we know enough of that language, we can press E. This describes something nearby. Two so serpents guard life and death. I lie trapped within the eternal struggle. So this is an actual clue that you're supposed to engage your actual brain. I don't know whether survival instincts helps you with this. Um, to find some secret in the area. Just a minor little secret. So when I climbed up this a second ago and I said, oh, this is a spoiler. Two, two serpents, it said, right? Well, this is just a relic. But here you'll see two serpents on the ground. Cinnabar was used in the ancient past for producing a bright orange pigmentation on ceramics, murals, tattoos, and in religious ceremonies. I like that we get this information about Cinnabar because there is that really striking red in all the architecture that's so, like, I know, very striking and very always makes me think of, you know, Mesoamerica. And here we have um, a nice early explanation of how they actually got the hue. Right, so you've got two serpents here. And now we can walk up to this and press E, and uh, you will find some some something usually. So there you go, monolith riches, and you'll notice there they went away very quickly. But we got a couple of quite exotic resources from that. The unfortunate thing about it, there for example, I got some uh, albino capybara resource, four of it. I've never actually seen that rare animal, but so through this system, I got the currency. And so, I don't know, it's like one system undermines the other, basically. Um, you don't re I've never had an experience in this game where I'm actually hunting the rare animals and trying to track them and figure out where they are and all that kind of stuff, which could be a really fun, novel, interesting idea uh, because you tend to just get so much stuff from everywhere else anyway, um, especially if you're trying to get all the lore and all the other side stuff. And again, I'm saying this with the perspective of someone who has... I have never 100 percent of this game. You know, I've not, I've not done an exhaustive thing on this before. And even at that, I've pretty much been flushed with everything I could ever need. All right, so now we have the actual physics puzzle to progress the game, which is what Jonah's been rambling about and stuff. They probably queued his dialogue a bit fast there. It would have been nice if he was still speaking. All right, so... Um, and I don't remember fully how this work goes. Let's just pull this and see what happens. Hey, that did something. I think the water powers the bridge somehow. Okay, so I guess by opening this sluice by or, or whatever this gate, the water is now running down this, down this, and it's falling onto this. But it's flowing out of the left and just straight into the river. But what we probably want to do is shift this like a seesaw so that it fills this weight. And this weight you can see is connected to this rope, which is connected to this whole thing here which probably has something to do with the bridge, you can guess, right? So we're just trying to get the water into that for now. So with the water running, let's move to this wheel. Jonah will probably help us with this because it looks very big. It's too heavy. Give me a hand. Yeah, he's doing it. Don't worry. And you see we're moving the seesaw. The water's filling the bucket. Good. Let's see what those counterweights do. But so Jonah's got to keep the pressure on that. And I think he can only do it for a little while. See? Poor Jonah. Oh, the bucket's leaking. And the bucket itself, yeah, is leaking water, so it rises back up. So basically, the game here is we want to rush while the bucket is full. And if you have a look at the whole contraption, by the way, you'll see it's rolling this thing at us, which is doing all kinds of weird stuff. This, this is coming up here. What we want to do is go down to where that was, right? You see, they've got this counterweight here. Hurry! I can't hold this much longer. So I obviously wasted some time there showing you guys all the physics. So one more time. If you remember a minute ago, I actually did wander down there. I can't remember what we were rambling about at the time. 
rim world maybe. Okay, so real quick. Go down. This is rolling here, as you can see. And what we want to do is connect the ropes together. Okay, Jonah. You can let go. And now that they're connected, it's pulling that bit up. This is one of those things where I think all the physics and stuff works perfectly. Um, it's so complex though, and I don't know, I kind of want to like really stop and analyze exactly how all that works, because it feels authentic. But there you go, so we pulled this up, do the big jump, and across we go. Now I don't know whether you really can call those puzzles. Guess we go through here. After you. But I think they, they require at least a little bit of thinking, so. What's that? I think it's some sort of stealer or help me with this. Sure. I don't know what that word is. What's a stealer? Anyone wanna help me out in chat? What is in the it? Comments? It's a recipe. Seems to be a mixture of herbs. Could help if we run into any more jaguars. <laughs> Let's hope we don't. Way out is over here. Okay, Eye of the Eagle. Uh, so, uh, this is actually reasonably useful, especially for like hunting the enemies and stuff. Uh, so, for me, I've got it on num five. Again, that's just on my thumb. Uh, use the perception herbal mix. Now we're going to have to gather stuff and craft those mixes together, but what it will do is it will light up animals all the time around us for, for its duration, which is kind of like having survival instincts, but without having to actually use survival instincts. So, you know, some of you guys might have had some doubts. Oh, WP's turned off survival instincts. Is this really going to be that good or whatever? Hey, it will be good. Trust me. And we still get a lot of these features because of these mixtures, which are a lot of fun. Uh, also in the chat, uh, WP, will you ever do a little, little big adventure playthrough given that they're redoing the games? Yeah, I've been vaguely following that. I, I, I'm i kind of nervous about it. I feel like they're going to trample on my nostalgia and my childhood memories with those. I think it might be fun to play them. I've been very like um, quiet, really. You know, with these new playthroughs I'm doing here, I haven't talked much because I don't want to make any big, bold, grand statements to anyone about any channel plans or big channel updates just for them not to work out in the end or whatever. But uh, if this is good, if people are watching these series and, you know, this like this is a lot of fun for me. If this proves to be sustainable, I kind of really like the idea of just doing lots of different games now. Like, it will be a very different era of WP if this works out, and I hope it will. And so I would genuinely say, yeah, I am actually quite interested in that idea. Um, and a lot of old games, actually. There's a city building series that I love as well, uh, Zeus, Master of Olympus. And I really, the other day, I saw... Um, what was it? Something came to my attention about it, and uh, I just was like, oh, I really want to play that game. I would love to do YouTube videos on it, but I've just kicked up these two playthroughs, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally up for it, really. I think it'd be cool. And just because they're old games doesn't really bother me. I mean, it's been in the outro of my videos for, like, eight years now. It's not always been the outro of my videos, but you guys hear music from that game. Every Wooden Potatoes video, you hear music from that game. And I feel like one day it would be great to do an LP of it. I, can't wait to get back to civilization. I also, though, feel like because it's in all the videos, it's that extra bit special. And I need to do it at the right time, you know? Maybe it should be the final thing I ever do, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I want it to be good. I don't want it to be a disappointment. On the other hand, there's something to be said for overthinking everything and wanting everything to be too big and good and blah 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 and then never doing anything at all. No. I mean, there is supposed to be a secret city of gold in Peru. Paititi. Every treasure hunter on Earth is looking for it. But Dad's notes stop in Mexico. Like he's lost interest or... Or? I don't know. The next volume picks up in Syria. Aha. So, Richard might have found the lost city, Paititi. The passageway. That's promising. That's the first time we hear Paititi, by the way. Chase the heart of the serpent. To the silver-crowned mountain where the twins confer. Hmm. We're going to hear a lot about Paititi as this goes along. How far do you think it is to Kwakiaku? Assuming we're going the right way, um, hard to say. But the irrigation system is a good sign. Right. People were here at some point. Let's just hope they still are. 
Okay, thank you, Jonah. This sequence is a bit weird. Uh, not too much of the game is with characters like this, where they're constantly like talking over you. You do sort of get left alone after a bit. Well, I don't know. A few things to think of. Okay, Death Lords. This is more of Mam. Wait, no, no, no. What? Teach me about Death Lords. A depiction of the Lords of Jibalba. Now, Jibalba, uh, the second reboot. Um, so, Tomb Raider Underworld. Again, I have YouTube videos on that. Jibalba is in that. There's actually an episode. Uh, like, sorry, like a story, a chapter of the story about Jibalba. And, uh, you know, the point of that game is that all these legends about underworlds were actually true. And there is there is a real underworld. And that was an incre that was basically the last jungle thing that Tomb Raider had had until this game, and it was an unbelievable level. I remember it being so gorgeous back in the day. I bet I'd go back and it'd look rubbish now, but hey. All right, no, but I want to read that. So, I'm proficient in Kwekua, but I only have limited understanding of MAM. I'm 55%. 50%. So, you see, we get these three pips, these three nodes. That sort of represents your total mastery. That's Quaker. Here you go. These two gods are the rulers of the Maya underworld, Shabalba, literally the place of fright. Vukub Kakwish, whose name means Seven McCall, was a monstrous bird who is said to carry the false sun in his beak. His subordinate was Hun Kame, which means one death. They are both defeated and killed by the hero twins after challenging them to various sports and games in which both sides cheated. Vukub Kakwish lost his game of darts when the hero twins used blowpipes. See, look at this. Even more stuff about twins. Yeah, I like this one as well. I love this thing. That game always makes me think of... Um, have you ever guys seen... It's not a Disney movie. It's an animated movie. Is it DreamWorks before they were doing 3D? Who's the studio? But The Road to El Dorado? You know, famously, it's got that scene where, where the, the princess equivalent, like, goes down on one of the guys. Like, you literally see her sliding her head down his body. And then, like, later, I think someone bursts in the room and she, like, like, the guy's laying back with his hands behind his head or something. And she suddenly, like, sits bolt upright around his waist. Like, it's very, very heavily implied that he's getting head. <laughs> um, but it's like a kid's movie. And um, I can't remember who makes it, though. Anyway, in that in that movie, it's a brilliant movie. I believe it has a, a, a soundtrack filled with Elton John tracks, which pretty much just uh, really sums up the early 2000s, late 90s to me. You know, Pokemon has a bunch of Elton John sounding stuff in it too, believe it or not. But anyway, uh, yeah, they play that ball game in, in, that, in that movie. Dream it is DreamWorks, is it? Yeah, anyway, it's good stuff. Um, you could at least play Little Big Adventure before changing the outro. That's a good idea, actually, yeah. Just play the game and then do a new outro. You know, for these new series I'm doing here, I kind of wanted to change the intro and I wanted to change the outro and I, I wanted to change, you know, the art and everything. I really wanted to give it a sort of a sense this is a new era of WP or whatever. But uh, so you notice the outro now has like a black backing. That's just because basically I, I was very lazy about it and I just didn't find a better, a better background. I thought black looked okay. Um, I really like that idea, but I'm crap at art, and, you know, I, I, I couldn't find it in myself to go ask someone to make me anything or whatever. But I thought it would be really cool to sort of have a new face of the channel now. Maybe not so much as a new icon. I think the three potatoes should stay. But, um... Okay, so there, for example... How am I supposed to know what I just picked up? Oh, there you go, pistol parts. Whatever weapon these were attached to was rusted away in the jungle's humidity. There's something etched on them. Can barely make it out. This is quite cool. I feel like this has to make people think about Lara's pistols. So here you're going to find the struggle with getting the hidden information. I just heard the Deling noise, but... It's somewhere around here. P-H... Percy Fawcett, but we must be thousands of kilometers from his last known position. See, that's so broken. I, I was supposed to be looking at this, was I? Why was it triggering back here? I don't know. It must be something about playing at 1440p, playing on high refresh rate. I don't know. Like a big thing I do in my free time at the moment is mod Stellaris. 
and I'm trying to get it just right. It's got all kinds of performance issues, and for me, I can't even play that game on full screen. It breaks be- just because of the refresh rate of my screen. I feel like something weird's going on in this game with that as well, because this is so hard. But anyway, there you go. This is Percy's Pistols. It's weird that Lara's shocked by that, because we've been finding his journals in this area. Is he a real ca- a real person? If I wikied Percy Fawcett, would I find a thing about him? Anyway. Um, and yeah, Banjo saying, uh, um, was it Banjo? Where is it? Uh, yeah, saying Emerald Moon, the song, the Little Big Adventure song is iconic, despite you've never played it. Dude, that's not even the best bit of that song. Um, the thing I've got in my outro. It's just the outro can only be 20 seconds long, so I can't quite get to it. And I need the big kick into the beat or whatever, so... Uh, but yeah. Alright, another another camp. Can we fast travel? Nope. Can we craft... Okay, so here, check it out. We've got the climbing axe. There's a new one as well from a DLC, I guess, called the Grip of Fear. Which we can equip, and you see this looks like an ancient kind of version. A primal design, optimised for climbing and fighting. Enemies are more likely to get knocked down, and will stay down for longer. Should we use this just for funsies, I guess? I mean, why not? The DLCs are there to be used. We could look at upgrading our bow now. There you go. So we do have enough for the reinforced limbs. And this is actually really detailed. Again, I mean, look actually f- look at the model very carefully. And you see we've got this icon here, which means when we get the reinforced limbs... Oh, I lied, I guess. I thought it actually changed the model. In the other games, it changed the model, didn't it? Well, there's some strong nooks for us as well there. So we've improved our bow a bit. Our basic bow. <clears throat> Let's not spend too long in this camp. I know I can spend even more skill points. But okay, so there's the main route. Obviously, Jonah wants us over there. But there is this tomb. This is not the tomb I expected to do today. I but let's go for it. There might be a way in. If it's not civilization, I'll wait here by the fire. Okay, farewell, Jonah. So let's see what we got, and if I recognise this one. Oh god, how cramped and horrible is this? Actually, this makes me think of being a little kid, you know, and like crawling around in like... I don't know, the outdoors. With all the leaves and the mud around. Have I had any luck restoring my old save and mods for 12? No, I haven't even tried. Literally. Uh, whenever I think about it, I just get a bit bummed out and stressed by the thought. What I just really need is just to sort of have a clear slate and a clean conscience and a comfortable, happy state of mind, and then just to sit down and just rummage through it all. I still have the old PC and the hard drive and everything. Everything should be recoverable. I just need to put the energy into it. The other thing that's on my mind is obviously that modding community will have come a long way. The tools will have developed and stuff. But yeah. So, let's see. We probably want to be up here to get across that chasm. Oh, a bottomless pit. How lovely. So we're back to this. I don't like these these uh, these picks, actually. They, they don't look good at strong enough to actually embed into even quite soft rock like this, you know? Okay, so we can make that jump. Probably don't want to climb up. Drop down. What exactly was down there? Oh, there is a suggestion of actual wood and things to cl- you know, clank onto before we hit the bottom. Oh, the trip rope, trip wire. I like how it comes out of the skulls in the wall too. Skulls in the wall, now that's uh, that's pretty iconic right there. An old backpack. Reveals crypt, oh yeah, okay. So again, from the other games, you remember these. Uh, if I press tab here, for example. <clears throat> You see, here we are, the Peruvian jungle, first first area of the world. And what is it marked for us? Well, a bunch of stuff we've already claimed. Um, but here, for example, a tomb that we didn't beat that way because I didn't have the gear to get into it. Now, if I uh, interact with this... It actually popped the map. You'll see it says that there's a survival cache up ahead. Oh, I guess it's only revealing stuff coming up. Well, that's not, that's not very useful, really, is it? But that that's the idea, though. Okay, and so um, there is something to be said when you're playing these games, if you are going for 100%, to just play really casually, run through, because it will unfog a ton of stuff on your map and make it all a very basic process of just following the map around. You know, once it's on the map, you can waypoint it, and then it will highlight on survival instincts and stuff. Oh, that was a nice little thing there, by the way. We threw it on the end of a rope. Okay, so... 
You could try to scramble up, but I don't think that's what they want us to do. I think what they want us to do is remember we can descend on a rope. We can go down. Here I'm holding nothing, and now I'm holding left click again, and that will turn me into, like, swing mode. Hopefully I've given myself enough slack on this. I think I have. Good. The rope mechanics in this game are actually really not bad at all. For a series that has a history of having very bad this rope mechanics. Early 20th century. It's got an old campsite. Oh, I do remember this one, actually. I do remember this tomb. An explorer's journal. That start shirt faucet may be getting all the attention, but I know his time is almost up. The world will remember the Timothy Walker as the man who finally found the lost city of El Dorado. We've set up camp in a canyon. It was a grueling journey to get this far. We'll rest here a few days, get our bearings. Some of the men need patching up, and I wouldn't mind one good night's sleep. The men say something came through the camp last night. The jungle is getting to them. I keep telling them that we're close and we need to keep it together. One of the scouts has found a temple of some kind up ahead. We'll start construction of bridges and ladders this morning and head out from camp this afternoon. I love how hostile all of these make the jungle in this area of the world feel. And it's because they are, even for us in the modern day with modern medicine and medical practices, let alone back then. Anyway, so all these people are just dead here at the camp, shot by arrows. Would you believe it? Right then and there. I haven't played with survival instincts for a good long while. And I just pressed Q, like instinctively, thinking, oh, let's check if there's something that we might miss. This cache is interesting, but I'm zoomed in so much, it's not actually giving me the map. Okay, uh... It feels like that's the way to go, but I mean, what, what on earth would we do? I don't think we can cling to any of the walls or anything. Oh no, it's definitely over here, right? Oh no, maybe not. Oh, scramble up this. And put our pick in it. There we go. Nice. See, that's good. I think normally that would have just been covered in white. Also, uh, hold on, hold on real quick here. Can we shoot that down? Pull that down? Nope. They're not anything. Never quite know if there's going to be another challenge there. Alright, so with that, now can we jump to the left? Can Will she grab that? Oh, okay, the higher one. I was thinking she was going to grab the ledge slightly below. I'm using my finger to point here. Not that it would really help. Oh my god, what was that sound? It sounded like something screaming. Nice big vista there. Distant view. Wouldn't it be so sad for Jonah if she, he just never saw Lara again now? Get okay, a campfire. Usually I think those would be useful to fast travel in and out of the entrance here. But because we don't have it unlocked yet, it's not quite... It's really interesting to me that they locked off that first tomb, but not this one. I was thinking in my head, maybe they just want them locked off until uh, we have fast travel, but it's not that either. God, this all seems so unstable. Yeah, even Lara is saying it's someone around. Okay. Handy little pot. Let's see, so what mixtures can I do? So by holding num5, I can craft these. Num1, we don't need to. So there, I've drank my perception potion. And so you see, I can see this spider, which... I should be able to pick up, maybe. I don't have to shoot it, do I? In fact, I say spider. That is blatantly a tarantula. Oh, don't you stay away. It actually looks kind of realistic, doesn't it? Can I do anything with it? No? Oh, I just killed it for no reason. I'm so sorry. Oh, that made me shiver a little bit. You know what? I, I mentioned I, I'm trying to feel Christmassy, right? I'm thinking of maybe watching a Christmassy movie each day until Christmas from now on, right? Um, so I did Home Alone yesterday. That tarantula in Home Alone I had completely forgotten about, and it is so creepy. Ugh. There's a lot of really horrifying stuff that happens at the end of that movie. Like... These people would be getting killed. Um, but probably the most horrifying thing is the tarantula stuff. Which is kind of sad too, because like I said, they're really fragile. Yeah, that's a real tarantula in the movie, and they're like picking it up and throwing it around. It's almost cruel, actually, I think. I don't know whether cruel is the right word, because I don't know whether a, 
a tarantula has sapience on to the level to which you even can be cruel to it, you know? Can you be cruel to a rock? Can you be cruel to a houseplant? At a certain point, a, a primitive enough creature, I, I don't know whether it's appropriate terminology anymore. Uh, sorry, where were we just now? We were all the way up there, right? So what about that area underneath? Do you want to turn around and have a look? Oh no, that's just the way out. Never mind, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm making a mountain out of a mile over here. Um, so yeah, you know, I watched that movie expecting to feel quite Christmassy and ended up just being like interested in how dated the movie looks now. You know, because I'm about the same age as Home Alone, right? And it's weird for me to look at it now. Like I, I, I watched it uh, with some friends in Discord and, and we were saying, you know, like, are these, are some of these actors alive? You know, some of the older ones. It's like, no, no, of course they are. It was just yesterday that movie came out. But, you know, it's a world before mobile phones. So a lot of the plot doesn't work. I was actually really impressed with how cleverly they set it up because it's such a stupid idea, you know. But they really, they're very smart. You know, it's the whole family that goes on holiday. So it's not like you can just put the kid with an aunt, aunt or uncle or whatever. Um, and, you know, because there's no mobile phones, it's like, well, why doesn't he just call the police? Well, they have him, you know, cut the phone lines and stuff. There's, there's lots of, like, good little detail in there to make the plot believable without it feeling like overly convoluted so i actually think it's quite clever for that reason but yeah it's such a christmasy movie just snowy everywhere decorations everywhere it's just incessant i like the old saw here just straight up a saw on the table it actually made me put up my decorations today but i, I want to do more because usually i'm pretty pathetic with my decorations since i've lived here and you know moved out as my own adult and doing my own things uh, i want to put more tinsel up but i need those like um i don't know what you call them but like little pins and things to actually push tinsel into like I don't know, the ceiling or just fun places. So I've got to get my hands on some of those. Okay, that seems like about it. I keep looking at these documents and thinking maybe we can grab one of them. I like that little toolbox there. I like how Lara like instinctively knows not to mess around with certain things because there's no chance there'll be anything of value in them. Something just moved up ahead. Really? I'm not giving you guys the creepy atmosphere that the game's trying to play with right now, am I? This looks so dodgy, it's unreal. Well, okay, hold on, so what do we got here? Can we pull this? No, but that's only in this direction. Maybe we can pull it from... Oh, from this direction? That would have been odd. Uh, we can push it, though, it looks like. But not from this direction. From this direction. No. Hold on. I'm, I'm standing here. I'm tapping E. Okay. She just didn't want to do it. Pull? Okay. We can pull this. How does this help us though? Oh. It's going to let us set up this rope bridge. Like so. Nah. Lara. Oh. That's not my fault. Come on. Unbelievable. I like how we're th this many games in now. Oh, look at how quickly it put me back, by the way. The rope's established and anything. And there's still clunkiness like that. Okay, I'll have to be go a little bit slower and a little bit more carefully. Stand completely still. Carefully hop up. This place in the middle of building it. Ooh, but why? What supernatural thing has been firing all these arrows at everyone? Or is it a supernatural thing? So let's pull this to just set all of this in motion. Absolutely nuts. Let's grab this real quick. Get on the crate. I assume it's going to move off. It's all going to swing back in a second. It's my assumption. Or maybe not. Maybe I need to do it on a time or something. Wait, can I interact with any kind of rope or anything here right now? Do we go back down? Because I'm assuming I can... This has got to be used for something. Aha, look. Hmm. Well, we could cut this rope. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. Put push this back and connect the rope to the crate and then climb back over there 
and undo what we just did a second, but the crate will stay. Oh, I think I get it. The, the crate's going to try and move, but it will stay because the rope's there. And then eventually the rope's going to snap. But that time it will buy me will be enough time to get on. That's my thinking with this. So let's pull this back. And run. Oh my god, this is so dodgy. Can you imagine doing this in real life? There we go. And off we go. That's probably the end of the tomb, to be honest. It's really interesting for me to see how the Survivor Chili Tree tried to recapture the puzzle platforming from the classics. But it's just the whole control scheme's different. The whole rendering of the environments is different. It just kind of doesn't work, you know. So you just end up with these kind of like basic little physics things that are trying to recapture an experience. You know, like looking for cogs in the Lost Valley and stuff. This just doesn't feel anything like that, does it? It doesn't feel like getting all the keys in St. Francis's Folly or... I mean, like there I'm kind of giving you collect-a-thon examples, so maybe that's wrong. The Underworld Gate. Here, under the watchful eye of one of the Lords of Death, lies the gate to Shabalba, where all must travel when transitioning from this life to the next. Yeah, everything was square and exact distances in Tomb Raider. Uh, kind of. By 3, they started doing a lot more triangles, you know, like half squares and stuff. And they started playing with slopes and elevation more, and, and it did get trickier, and it did get a little bit more sophisticated. But yeah, you're, you're basically right. You know, the, the movement and the puzzle, the puzzling and the platforming and the pu and um, you know just the exploration they were all very tightly bound together based around a very precise clunky control scheme that just wouldn't fly in the modern era so you just can't make those games in the modern era even back in the day by the time the fourth fifth game came out everyone was tired of it and other games were doing better like metal gear Me people were moving to games like metal gear solid and you could see that the the tomb raider was getting insecure about that kind of thing and it was trying to force stealth gameplay in that wasn't working blah 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 Anyway, uh, I think we got to jump over there. That looks vaguely like she might grab it. There's also that. And then there's that. I'm going to go for it. It doesn't really look like a good idea, does it? Oh, dear. I'm going for it. Okay, we're good. We're good. Oh, come on. I hit a oh, I did it in time. Oh, I think that was like... I think that was scripted. Oh shit. We gotta jump to the right, jump to the right, jump to the right! What? I totally got screwed out of that. She was jumping. She was in the animation. That's so unfair. Okay. Yeah, that is scripted. So, what's going on up there, guys? Is that a coincidence? Or is somebody pushing them? There we go. We'll just do it really early. I maintain that I would have made that. I just put the cutscene on. All right. There's no way they could afford the house electric build for a family that size. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. It's like this weird, white, rich fantasy of a life, isn't it? They're living in a mansion. They're paying for, like, 15 people to go on holiday in Paris. You know, these are all ludicrously expensive things. Now to find my way out. To be fair to the movie, though, it doesn't, it doesn't on any level, try to pretend these people are working class. I mean, it is. It, it's just, I don't think you get movies like that anymore because people kind of detest the, the wealthy. And the, I mean, I know I certainly on some levels do. You know, people are more bitter about those with more wealth than them. I think there's, there's a certain element of Home Alone that I don't understand because it's like the American dream, you know? Everyone thinks that they're just temporarily embarrassed billionaire, millionaire or whatever, you know? They all think that that could be them, that that's going to be their life or whatever. And they like look up to it positively. But I, I don't know, maybe maybe 30 years on, people are more bitter about that kind of thing. And people don't want to see movies about ludicrously well. Well, I mean, to a certain degree, people like the style of it. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I can't speak for the world. Okay, Eagle's Perch. So by completing the tomb, we get a perk. And, you know, we've got skills and skill points. Well, so here, this, that either gave it to us straight away or it's just available for purchase now. I can't remember which. I think it's just going to be available for purchase. Um, but so there you go. And that would have been handy in that little sequence we just played. Of course, this hasn't answered the question of what sneaky, paranormal, potentially dangerous entity 
stalked the people that were here and perhaps even us. Here you see we get gold. I believe the last game had gold as well, didn't it? So we got gold ore. I've already got 10. Rare metal harvested from ore veins and found in chests. Sell to merchants. What merchants, you might be wondering? Well, time will tell. And uh, I believe in the previous game there was a lot more like mining going on here again. Like, I don't know. I have very few memories of actually mining. And now we're just on our way out. Hold on, though. Let me look real quick. Ah, I missed a document. I missed a document. And the reason I know that is probably because of the backpack we got at the start. Let's just have a quick look here. Oh, that sucks. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is it just in here? No, that's more gold. I could probably make that jump, but that's not the right way. Hold on. The document's in this direction. Oh god, is it all the way over there? It's back over by the crate. Let's hop back over this. I mean, I'm kind of stuck on this side now, aren't I? I mean, it's not that the crates can move back. The document, I guess, was over at that camp then. Which is sort of unfortunate. Holy crap, I'm surprised that worked. I don't think they really expect you to do this. So hold on, by the way, I have a little bit more context for what it's like up there. Can we actually literally stand on that platform where those things were getting pushed off? The original series was a bit like Croc. I don't remember Croc being that way. Croc is one of my great loves as well. You know, I have, the, I have a very old series on YouTube from like years and years and years ago. I seriously doubt many of you guys have seen it, but um, I covered like random games. Like the idea was to do like a, a game that was on sale on Steam each day or whatever. And I think for the outros of that, that was in summer, I think I put the Croc music on that. Similar to how Emerald Moon's on a lot of my videos now. This is nice. I mean, look at this. Croc was just at that perfect time in my life. Oh, we hooked on to the top. Where I just, I don't know. It's just like that thing where you just remember everything was happy and brilliant. And we've got to connect some rope to somewhere here. Oh, all the way over there. This feels a lot like 2013, this little sequence here. I just always think about being in that, like the opening hub world of Croc 2 is what I'm talking about specifically. With like the 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 crates of soda around, and the happy beaches, and yeah, just just all around good time. Okay, so we're back now. Okay, so if we go that way, we can go to the documents. The question is, do we want to go for that document right here, right now? I think I do want to do it. I st I still don't know if this is going to be a hundred percent playthrough. But I don't think it's very far away. And now that we've seen all the like the little scenes and stuff, you'd be surprised how quickly you can get through this. And I think it's quite close to. Mm, I don't know. Let's see. We just roll through here. If my memory serves correctly, we're basically near the crate sequence now, aren't we? Oh no, not there. Long this and this. We go down on the rope. And we complement the rope swinging mechanics. <laughs> and what I'm also wondering is if I kill Lara after this, will it dump me at the exit again? And it was here. Surely it's here. Oh, next camp. Over on the right. Uh, this was where we climb on this. Scramble up. Hop to the left, but not too low because it's the upper bit we're going to climb on. Oh my god, look, we hear the sound again. It's weird, because it, that sounds like it could be an animal. It sounds like it could be a person. It almost sounds a little bit like it could be a ghost or something. So it's not this little camp here, though we are very close now. That campfire is interesting again, because if we had fast travel, we could just quickly sneak out. I have a really good idea for where I want to end this part as well, by the way. And it is at that little uh, shanty town we saw a second ago. Um, Kuwak Yaku.
straight up through here. We're aiming right at it right now. One more rope sequence. Need to get used to left click there. Oh, do you know what? No, it's not. We never did climb up there, though. I thought that was going to be the way out. Maybe it is a quick way out, actually. Uh, that little cave. Hold on, what? I'm confused. Is there a way through in here? Where did we go from here? Oh, we're so close to it. Oh, hold on. There was a rope there? No. Where do we go from there? Oh, we can pry through this. Maybe this is where the thing is? This is definitely something I haven't seen. Oh, holding E is not working on this one. We, we're definitely going with the tap. Oh, no, this is just back into the little tomb area that we were in a, a second ago. Okay. So, yeah, that's 100% just a way back. Oh, it's just climb on the tree, obviously. Silly of me. Grapple onto the rope or the woods. Okay, it must have been here. I must have missed the document. It must have been right in here. And I don't know how I missed it. We're like dead on top. Ah, there it is. There it is. The finger length away. This is going to be terrible now. This is not going to have been worth the walk. Damn this place. Damn this forsaken jungle. It holds a jewel just out of reach and then sweeps your legs out from under you. We've almost made it across that bottomless pit. Some kind of altar beckons from the other side. Under a giant stone face that seems to mock our efforts. Something attacked the camp. Some men claimed it was panthers. Others said something more sinister. Half the crew insist on abandoning the expedition. I had to dress one man down. Made an example of him. All I need is one more day. One more lousy day. And does he get that day or were they all wiped out before the end? It's the Sissamite, clearly, guys. And that's what was stalking us as we were wandering around here. The danger of the Sissamite. So now that this physics puzzle was reset... I guess we do it again. I always like puzzles like this, you know, where um, they've returned to how they once were. Oh, we got a pull right. Just by virtue of how you do it, it's a self-resetting process. I always feel like these must be much more complicated and difficult to design than they are to play. Oh, I was so sure I was going to die in the same way there. And now that we don't actually need to collect any items or anything, it really is just a process of get on the box and go. this of course we do have to wait for it to travel here croc is abandoned where now you can get it on pc for free really hold on what does that mean well no okay i understand abandoned where to mean um Something that was in development but got cancelled halfway so it never existed, you know, so it's not a sellable product No one owns it blah 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 blah. That's what I understand abandoned where to mean How can croc be that when it was originally released? Are you telling me that there's no one owns the license to it? Who published croc who developed croc? I don't actually know That's a sad thought well is it a sad thought I mean these products are getting fairly old now at this point it, no, it is a sad thought, because I'll tell you what, in this era, you can release anything on Steam and make a quick buck off of it. Even if you made it back in the 90s. You see a lot of people do that, and I think it deservingly so. People like to have it on that platform, and they like the achievements and stuff. It's like what I've been saying on the Final Fantasy VI playthrough at the moment. That's weird, that it would just be completely abandoned. Surely someone lays claim to some of its rights or something. Okay. <clears throat> and with that done, what was the final route out? 
It was just over here, right? God, I'm so insecure about that jump. Like, she's just not going to do it. Oh, what? They're doing this again? That's outrageous. I see you, monster. I'll be coming. But not for now, I suppose. All right, and we're done with the tomb. Sorry we kind of did two loops through it. Again, classically, I would have done all that off screen. We'd be cutting back in right now, and I'd say something like, Hi guys, so I just replayed through the whole tomb. It took uh, a little bit less time than I expected, but you know. And you would be none the wiser all the incredible adventures I had revisiting <laughs> the location. Okay. I mean, maybe if I'm just a little bit more careful, we can avoid that happening again. Or, you know, I could just cut together a montage of picking up random little trinkets and things that we've missed before. But there you go. So that's the uh, tomb. The question is, what's the actual way out? Uh, is it back under these or is it? are we already... Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, Jonah, we're back. Hello? You didn't get eaten, did you? By a jaguar? Oh, yeah, we want to crawl under this. Reverse direction now. This again is, I talk about this so often, this is a uh, sneaky loading screen. What they're actually doing is they're unloading all the stuff behind us. That tomb would have been its own like little map, its own section. And, uh, you know, they're, they're drawing in all the stuff in front. And they're immersive and they're cool. The downside is, obviously, it doesn't matter how fast the console is that you're playing on or the PC you're playing on, it will always be a certain length. Another of those Maya altars and... And what? An old camp gone to ruin. We should keep going. Right. What about the weird creepy monster thing? You're not going to confide in him about that? So let's have a look at our skill tree here. So, challenge tomb reward. Ah, uh, here you go. See, and it has the exclamation mark on it. So, eagle's perch. We have it acquired already. Increased speed while climbing, as you can see. There's also this one over here, eye of the eagle. Uh, perception plants allow sensitive animals. So, whenever we get something, it will expand the tree. Yeah, it's not like we're amongst a, bunk of, uh, a bunch of them, are we? So Jonah will come with us into this one. I think we can get out that way. So this icon here, where it's the two silhouettes, that obviously means you need Jonah, someone with you. Help me with this. I don't really remember any part of the game where there's an obstacle. On three, two. One. And you don't have an NPC with you. You know, it's like come back later or whatever. Oh! Oh my god, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot about this. Oh, she would be so dead! Its fangs were in her. Can you have shot it through? Do you think it's the same one looking for vengeance? I mean, I doubt it. Look, the howler monkeys again. Oh, come on. I didn't even know I was in game gameplay there. Oh, my God. Okay, wait, wait. We got to heal with num four. Come on, Jaguar. This guy's a lot faster. There we go. I don't know where the headshots really count, by the way. But, uh, isn't hiding away so much. I mean, I feel so bad, man. But it is him or me. Or she or me. I don't know. Among jaguars, is it is it still... Is it like lions, okay. the females of the hunters? Or do they all hunt? Lara has such a slight build. I can't help but think she can't be lifting much of that. <laughs> Your back looks bad. Ugh, oh, she's ruthless. I'm gonna go make camp. It's interesting as well, you know, we just ran up and we've just pressed E on things and get a bunch of resources. In a real world, it would take days, you know. <laughs> well, no, not days. It would take like a whole afternoon to skin or get or whatever you were actually looking for. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's right. Just stretch it out. It's it's no worse than just, you know, working out and then getting a bit of ache the next day. You're only pierced by a fang. It's not pretty. I would love it in the new game after the time jump if she's just got like loads of scars all over her. You know, with everything we've been through recently, I've been thinking about my brother. Yeah, Jaguar com attack quit complaining. From my father. From himself. But I lost him. You did everything you could. If I had been in the right place, the right time, he would still be here. If I had eyes in the back of my head. You can't protect everyone. It's nice to get a bit of Jonah backstory. Thank you. It's also fun to think he's as much of a main character in this franchise now as Lara is. And imagine like after the time jump what he'll be like, you know, or any of the other characters. Not that you see many of them, but outside of the comics. I know. My parents. I miss them too. I had a dream about my mother recently. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It was so vivid. <laughs> when I was little, my father used to keep things from me. Hide things. About her, especially. Why would he do that? After she died, he thought they'd cause me pain. It didn't stop me from looking for them, of course. <laughs> I still have so many questions. Your dad created as many mysteries as he solved. Some good face acting in this scene, I think. Dominguez said that he would use the silver box of his shell to remake the world. If you had that power, what would you do? <laughs> Panic, probably. You wouldn't go back to when your brother was alive and be with him again. Um, and lose everything else. No way. I like this world. It's it's not perfect. But everything I love now is in it. So obviously we were supposed to wonder if Lara gets this opportunity, what will she choose to do? That's obviously the uh, the little setup that we've got there. Nice little music there too. This is one of the better scenes of the game. And uh, that stuff about her parents and Croft Manor you might be wondering about. Croft Manor is in this game. There's a lot of really good stuff there coming up. Oh, we're hey, here already. The, the adventurer Lara Croft must outwit the king, reach the forbidden tomb, and solve the mystery of the White Queen. Oh, awesome. I, did, I thought this was later. Brought with trials. The adventurer should not dally any longer. In a minute, Dad! Oh, I love the music here. All right, okay, good good stop. I thought we got to Kuwakyaku first. The castle beckon, taunting. Awesome. Okay, this is like one of my favorite parts of the whole game. This is really cool. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, we play as Lara as a young girl at Croft Manor next. And uh, this is a really, really like, I, listen, I'm not someone who really bandies this word around. In fact, you'll very rarely ever hear me say it, okay? I think it's nearly never justified. People talk about it way too much. And I don't like the word much, but I'm going to use it here, okay? Ready? This is a quite a wholesome section of the game, okay? 
You'll, you'll very rarely hear me ever say that about anything, but genuinely, and it's a really, really cool, uh, cool, cool sequence. Very gorgeous. This is the best Croft Man has ever been, let me tell you. And uh, one of the absolute highlights of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I thought it was a little bit later. Honestly, I thought it was about halfway through the game. But uh, here we are. So we'll be in the playground, and there's lots of hidden things, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, I'll stop it there then. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Our adventures at Croft Manor. Um, I have some other stuff I have queued up for, from this episode here, by the way. There were so many other things I talked about in other editions of this playthrough. Like here, this image is one of the flashbacks we saw in the previous game of Lara with her mum and dad. And uh, can I just say, the mum, in some of the other like reboots, the mum has been a really big character. In this one, we really don't know anything about her, okay? Except that she died in a plane crash. And in the previous games, spoilers, you might want to go back to those if you're forgetting. But in one of the DLCs, we realise that Richard recovers her body and buries her here at Croft Manor. That's obviously set years after this flashback, but yeah. So uh, there you go. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, the chat today has been lovely. I really appreciate you guys coming along. Uh, I'm still watching the, uh, the, the regular comments like a hawk. So if you guys have any thoughts on that, please do let me know. And, um... Yeah, um, I'm available for contact on Discord and so on. Uh, I was talking in this game about, like, Lara having to deal with all those dead people in Mexico. And uh, people were saying in Bioshock on Discord it is probably a bit worse. Uh, so, yeah, maybe. But, uh, yeah, I, I still have yet to play the third one of that game. So I don't exactly know just yet. But anyway, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to go to use the loo. And I'll see you, uh, see you very soon. Take care now. Here's a bit of Emerald Moon.